Hi guys, welcome to the Larry Studios. Let's talk about confirming credentials in Android. Uh, we're going to actually create a demo application where you're going to use the device credentials, that's the PIN, the pattern, and the password in your app to authenticate the user before they are trying to complete some actions. Firstly, you need to create a symmetric key in the Android key store using the key generator, which can only be used after the user has authenticated after the user is authenticated with their device credential and pass the key generation parameter spec. By setting an integer value to the key generation parameter spec, you call the builder and you set the user authentication validity duration seconds. Uh, you could also consider the user as authenticated if the user has been authenticated with the device credential within the last probably 30 seconds. Then you call the key guard manager to create the confirm device credential intent. You can also show a screen to confirm the device credential to the user. We're actually going to be doing this right in this demo where we'll be using the, uh, the different uh, security patterns that you might have uh, for you in your Android device, the pin, the pattern, and the password to actually get triggered and authenticate uh, the user anytime you want an action to be done in your application. We're actually going to be using the Android SDK 26 and the build tools is going to be the version 26.01 and above and you also need the Android support repository to actually get this uh, application set up. Right there in Android Studio I'm going to actually brush down on how to set up this kind of application. In the dependencies you're going to uh, be needing the card view, the compact, the app compact to version 7 and uh, the Android support, uh, the version 13, 26.1.0, uh, with the support version 4. All these are very useful for you. So with this, you uh, get to synchronize Gradle. And this application will only work on Android 3.0, uh, Android Studio 3.0 and upward. Uh, so it's actually not compatible with, uh, uh, with lower version of Android Studio. So I will implore you to upgrade to the uh, 3.0 or 3.1 series of uh, Android Studio. Once you have that set up, you're cool to go. In the layout, you have the activity main, which is the launcher uh, of your application. And right there, you're going to have uh, this uh, kind of interface. From here, you could easily see that you are probably having an item and you want to purchase. Uh, in this uh, situation, you might probably need a form of authentication. So you could actually use the pin, uh, the, the pattern, or the password to actually get that authenticated. So you have an image view, which is just uh, the uh, Android mascot uh, wrapped around around uh, the item. We're talking about the title, uh, the price, and also the description of the item. And you have the button, uh, which is actually depicting purchase uh, with an ID of purchase button. So I would like you to take cognizance of this ID because this is actually going to be used in the Android Java code. From here, I'll be headed straight to the Java class. You only have the main activity as uh, the point of logic. And this is the main entry point for the app, uh, which is actually going to show a backpack and the purchase button. This extends app compact activity, and you have some fields here. Uh, the alias for our key in the Android key store, called the key name, and the secret bytes array. This is in our array, one, two, two, six. And you have the request code confirmation device credentials an integer of one and if the user has unlocked the device within the last uh, number of seconds probably 30 a minute uh, it can be considered as an authenticator that definitely it has authenticated in the, in the last 30 seconds or the last 20 seconds so the authentication duration seconds is set to 30 seconds and you need the key guard manager so you create an uh, element from there in the onCreate method you set the content view as usual you initialize the key guard by calling this get system service pointing at the context the key guard service you initialize the button by calling the purchase button and the tidy you have uh, the purchase button object to use now you're going to test if the key guard is uh, a key guard secure uh, this is actually going to show a message that the user hasn't set up a locking screen so you need to actually set up the locking screen in the security uh, right there in your settings so you have you must have a kind of uh, lock uh, process either a pin 
a pattern or the password so it's actually going to toast that you have to go through this step the settings the security and you have to set up a screen lock after that the purchase button will be set to false that it's not actually going to be active let's move further right there in the on create method uh, we have the create key and they try to encrypt in the create key uh, it can be done without you uh, triggering the button but to try to encrypt needs uh, the, the the button click so we'll first of all look at the create key uh, what's that doing uh, this is actually going to create a symmetric key in the Android key store which can only be used after the user has authenticated with device credential within the last seconds or within the last 30 seconds as we've specified so you need to generate a key to decrypt payment credentials token uh, this will lost uh, this most likely be a registration step for the user when they are setting up your half so it's actually going to actually uh, get the key store which you have here you get the instance and uh, you can have the key generator uh, which will call on the properties the key algorithm so this is actually going to be like a boilerplate so which could be re reusable so you need to set the alias of the entry in the Android key store where the key will appear and the constraints uh, which is the like the purpose in the constructor of the builder uh, where you have the set block modes uh, the set user authenticator required true and uh, you could actually require that the user has unlocked in the last 30 seconds as we've all done uh, passing the authentication duration seconds which has been set to 30 seconds and we have the equation padding uh, which uh, is calling the key properties encryption the padding pkcs7 so you could build up the key generator and uh, you generate the key at this point in time you have to catch since we are using a try and catch block and uh, what you're going to be catching you could be catching no such algorithm exception or no such provider exception or an invalid algorithm parameter exception or a key store exception or a certificate exception or an IO exception so those are likely exceptions that could be triggered in this course of uh, setting up the key generator and you throw the new runtime exception to actually undo that gracefully so that is that for the uh, key the create key which will be done right there when you actually start up your application in the on create method now when you have to, to click on the purchase button uh, this is where you need to test to encrypt something it might fail if the timeout expired cool but now you're going to actually uh, override a method called the on click uh, since you're going to be calling the on click listener on a button and what's going to be triggered the try encrypt method and this actually tries to encrypt some data with the generated key which only works if the user has just authenticated via device credentials so that's just it and now it's actually going to actually uh, get this done for you we have the key store which we all have the instance that we've had from the secret key and now the secret key is going to actually be triggered uh, where you need to get the key with the key name a constant and the, uh, the second parameter is null you need the cipher which is actually the algorithm involved in this model you have the key properties algorithm uh, we have the block mode uh, we have the encryption padding which you all set when you are actually uh, creating the key and uh, you need to try to encrypt something which will only work if the user authenticator within the last authentication duration period as we set so you have the cipher to call in its attributes to initialize and to do final uh, passing which is actually going to call the secret byte array which uh, we set up right there we have it right there which is in one to six now let's go further if the user has recently authenticated you will reach here that is going to show already authenticated which I uh, will get to uh, look at this uh, method show already authenticated now it's actually going to populate some message to the text view that that you've actually authenticated uh, with uh, the pattern or with the pin or with the password you've uh, done and the text view visibility will be visible and the text will be shown while the purchase button won't be enabled so you could move further now let's go uh, ahead of that you need to catch in some uh, exception the user not authenticated exception uh, this is when the user is not authenticated and it's going to actually let's authenticate with device credential so you need to show the authentication screen when the user is not authenticated so what's the authentication screen going to do 
This is going to create a confirm credential screen. You can customize the title and description or you will provide a generic one for you if you leave it null. So that's uh, the two parameter here, the title and the description. You could provide your own kind of uh, flow. Uh, but if you leave it null, it's actually going to uh, create that for you. So it's actually going to call the authentication screen you used, either the pattern, either the pin or the password. So you have that set up. And you need to call an activity for results since you're going to actually uh, get uh, something done and the results will come back. So you need to catch that and you need to override the on activity result, passing the request code, the result code and the data which is coming in. And now if the request code is uh, the confirm uh, device credential which you actually passed in into the start activity for results, uh, you need to uh, pass the challenge which must be completed and you proceed with using the cipher you try to encrypt you show the purchase confirmation let's get to look at the purchase confirmation this way you set the visibility of the conf confirmation message to be visible and the purchase button will now be set enabled first so cool that means you've completed uh, the uh, authentication and now you move in ahead so you could actually trigger an it at this point in time to another activity to do something uh, else once uh, the challenge has been completed in the result code results okay if method so cool with this uh you, you you you're rolling and you're moving far far ahead now in another exception the key permanently invalidated exception this happens if the lock screen has been disabled or reset after the key was generated after you know you might have uh, generated the key before you, you now change the pattern or before you change uh, the credential that you use so it's actually going to tell us that the keys are invalidated after after created you retry the purchase so you could actually retry that and get that set up now you could also catch for different kind of exception the bad padding exception the illegal block size exception key store exception certificate exception or recoverable key exception i exception no such party exception no such algorithm ex exception invalid key exception and you throw that at runtime exception cool from that you've been able to handle all uh, errors that might arise when you're trying to encrypt uh, the message so cool this is quite short and very handy and useful uh, in your application uh, if you actually want to create another level of security in your app probably if a user uh, needs to access his bank account or if a user needs to access a cre the credit card details or if a user needs to make a purchase so you could actually create another level of security so that uh, it's actually going to be uh, known by the device owner or the user at point in time so with this you could actually set it up and you could integrate uh, the credentials confirm credentials in your application I'll be showing you a demo of this uh, setup and you see how the flow actually is so you could actually integrate it in your application let's get to look at the manifest if there's any trick or any addition which uh, will be needed cool it's just simple as we've all known the main activity is the launcher where you have the internet filter to actually trigger the launch activity and you have that uh, set up so with all said and done uh, I'll be stopping at this moment and I'll be showing you the screencast of this uh, demo and I'll employ you to a layout of the source code and get uh, yourself digging using the confirm credential in your application. Thank you very much for hanging out with me throughout uh, this video and please don't forget to strike on the button, subscribe to my channel, have a blessed time. Bye bye for now.